Magnets and Electricity Hello, everybody. We are going to discuss magnets and electricity today and show you some cool STEM activities you can try on your own. Let's get started. First, there are some facts you should know about magnets and electricity. Magnets are pieces of metal that are able to attract certain kinds of other metals. The force drawing objects to a magnet is called magnetism, and the area surrounding a magnet is called a magnetic field. Let's see this magnetic field in action. There are two ends on each magnet. One end is called the North Pole, and the other is called the South Pole. When you put two magnets close to each other, you will see the opposite poles attract each other. If you try to put two North Poles or two South Poles together, they will repel each other. The Earth also has a magnetic field. When you use a compass, the needle inside is a magnet with two poles. The needle always points north because it is attracted to the Earth's North Pole. Pretty cool, right? Have you ever touched something and felt a shock after rubbing your feet on the carpet? Have you ever rubbed a balloon on your hair? What happened? Do you know why your hair stuck to the balloon? It is because of a reaction called static electricity. Just like with magnets, static electricity causes things with opposite charges to stick together and things with the same charges to repel. However, unlike magnets, this reaction is caused by electrical charges. There is one type of magnet that depends on electricity. See if you can guess which kind it is. There are three different types of magnets. Temporary magnets, permanent magnets, and electromagnets. As you probably guessed, electromagnets are the type of magnet that needs electricity in order to work. Now we're going to show you some fun STEM activities you can do to create your own magnetic fun at home. Starting with making a compass. First, we need to magnetize a needle by rubbing it with a permanent magnet. Now that the needle is magnetized, we will carefully push the needle through the center of the cork, making sure the same amount of the needle is sticking out on both sides. After placing the cork in a bowl filled with a few inches of water, we can see the needle moving and pointing in a specific direction. If the needle is properly magnetized, it should be pointing north. Let's use another compass to see if they are pointing in the same direction. Well, look at that. They're pointing in the same direction. What happens when we introduce another magnet? What does that tell you about magnets and magnetism? What type of magnet is this compass an example of? That's right. It is an example of a temporary magnet. Let's move on to painting with magnets. We will use a permanent magnet for this activity. We're going to drop paper clips into each color of paint placing each one in different areas on the paper. Using the magnetic wand underneath the tray, we can move the paper clips around to create fun patterns. Last, we are going to create an electromagnet that is made using a battery, coated copper wire, and an iron nail. After carefully wrapping the wire around the nail, we will press each end of the wire to the opposite ends of the battery. The electricity from the battery flows through the copper wire when it comes in contact with each pole, which causes the wire to conduct the electricity, arranging the molecules in the nail so that it attracts certain metals. When the connection between the wire and the battery is broken, the magnetic field is disrupted and the electromagnet no longer works. Thanks for learning with us. For more detailed instructions on the activities we showed today, and for more magnetic-related content, head over to our website, learnbright.org. Until then, see you next time. Hope you had fun learning with us. Visit us at learnbright.org for thousands of free resources and turnkey solutions for teachers and homeschoolers.